All right, let's uh, get started with Zero Mission. Uh, this is done entirely in post-commentary because I kind of had to actually focus on the game to get even this good of a playthrough going. So, this is obviously being done for hashtag Operation Samus Returns and all, all that. And I was wondering what could I do for that that would fit the channel in general while also being a kind of a one-off. And Zero Mission just happened to kind of fit the mold the best. It's kind of a lot shorter than Fusion in a way. So I figured I could probably learn to beat the game within like an hour in a month or so. And uh, it just took a lot of time and effort, especially when you combine it with the fact that I played other games at the same time. But this is what, what we get. It's... I wouldn't call it a speedrun, necessarily. It kind of is, but it's also kind of sloppy in many ways. Something that's pretty worth noting is that um, this was done on Wii U and it used the gamepad. Gamepad, rather, but you know. Um, the gamepad, its D pad really sucks. At least in this case. Because it likes to hit up or down when you try to wall jump. And uh, going fast in this game requires a lot of wall jumps. This. That's why I avoid most of them when they don't necessarily save a massive amount of time. Like, I, I could totally save time roughly probably right around here by wall jumping but that's not a viable option in addition to that I'm also bad at the game so th there is that so he here here comes the first problematic part destroying these mods cocoon things is something I am absolutely dreadful with and how I do it, it basically boils down to luck if I die or not. And uh, this attempt while I didn't die is not exactly fast or particularly elegant. It, uh, it kind of works, but it's also very slow and all, all, all that good stuff as, as we can see. I also almost die here, so there is that. Okay, maybe it wasn't that close, but it was a bit close. So, after this, there's not much happening out of the ordinary for a while. So, I think I could spend a bit of time explaining my history with Metroid as a series. So, I did not grow up with Metroid. I grew up with Nintendo. I played Zelda, Mario, all that good stuff, but uh, not Metroid. I never even knew Metroid existed. Pictured here, me failing a wall jump twice. Uh, when I was in like... 7th grade? 6th grade? Some, something ar around there. Uh, one of my classmates actually lent me Fusion, which I enjoyed immensely and I played it so much that I eventually beat the game within an hour, according to the in-game timer, that is. Uh, after that I lent Zero Mission from him, and then another, another classmate lent me all four Prime games up to that point. 
those being one, two, three, and uh, hunters. At some point, I bought Metroid 2 for the Game Boy, but I never much played it because the battery is dead and I was always too lazy to actually fix this. Uh, I have Super Metroid on the Virtual Console, but I've never beaten it, which is kind of a sin, I suppose, but I don't know. I, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. So, taking that into account, c come year 2010, and we have a new Metroid game. Of course I would be there to buy that launch, now that I would consider Metroid one of my personal favorite series of all time, despite not having nostalgia for it or anything. And uh, 2010 was not a good year. I, 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 I could complain about... I, I, I could absolutely complain about other them for hours, but, but I, I'm pretty sure most people have already done that to death. So let's let's just state that I, I don't think there's any game I hate more than that piece of shit. And uh, well, Metroid basically died then. And well, come 2016 and um, we get there's some high quality gameplay there. Uh, we get Federation Force, <laughs> which I'm apparently, uh, at the time, it seemed like I was basically the only person at all that was willing to give the game a chance. And uh, I stand by that. I think it's a pretty decent game. It just suffered from basically really bad marketing because well, Metroid at that point was, as far as we could see, dead. And the Federation Force did not exactly inspire confidence in Metroid being Metroid anymore. So it, it, it really boils down to the fact that Nintendo did not advertise it as a thing that's not going to be the norm for the series. Or maybe, maybe it was going to be if it was a success, but, well, what, what, 10,000 copies sold? Whether the game should be a Metroid game at all, still is up for grabs, really. That depends on Prime 4, because if the game has nothing to do with Prime 4, I don't think it needed to exist. I'm hopeful, though. <laughs> but that aside, uh, here's one of the first more interesting tricks that is bomb jumping up this to save a bit of time I didn't exactly do it stellarly there but I got a bit of height off of it and saved some time that's that's kind of a theme theme here I, I can do some of the non-wall jumpy difficult tricks that exist but uh, I can't do basic gameplay, nor can I do those wall jumps. So, now that we have the power grip, which is the most useless item in the game, seeing how you don't need it for anything, other than the fact that there's an artificial, uh, artificial roadblock, if you don't have it, and you can't pass beyond that, unless you have the power grip, so... Yeah, it's it's mandatory. It it has no reason to be one. But I, I mean, I, I understand why it's so that players can't accidentally get stuck beyond this point if they reach somewhere we are, like, bomb jumping or something. So, th this is still basically following the normal paths through the game. 
at this point we're headed towards the ice beam. But after we get the ice beam we start to kind of change things up a bit from how you would normally go through the game. So we'll be seeing that in a moment. Uh, because I have a lot of issues managing my missiles and health, I actually stop at many of these these uh, Jozo statues to refill, just so I don't know. I don't need to get good at this game. And well, there, there's another wall jump. You could do that a lot faster by just doing three of those instead. Now here's a quick skip over the statue, just for good measure. Uh, it does save a decent while. Uh, that freezing didn't work out the way I hoped, but not too bad. So, here's the sequence break number one, basically. By going here and using either bomb jumps or wall kicks or boats, I'm also not doing necessarily the best job here, but Getting three wall kicks in a row, or even two, with this control is, is pretty bad. I have to do that several times later, but, you know. So, that allows us to skip most of everything, really. There, there's the two warm enemies, bosses, things that you're supposed to kill, those are completely skipped here. And now we just get straight to the third one. And uh, I'm really bad at this fight. Like, always. You can kind of get a few cheap hits in. But after that you kind of either need to wall jump, which, as we discussed, is not actually an option for me. Or you need to use the turtle enemy to get the hits in and uh, I have a very limited amount of missiles which I managed so pretty well waste here having just barely enough to actually kill this before I run out of them. That poses its own problem because I should have a lot more missiles at this point but instead I'm just down to two. That aside though we're going directly to Ridley here Normally you're supposed to do great first, but it's faster to go this way for multiple reasons, really. So, those that have played Zero Mission might remember that you're supposed to fight the worm again after it has evolved into a bee. But, uh, with some hidden missile blocks and bomb jumping, you can just kind of go the other way around this place and skip skip that as well. You're supposed to fight the boss to get super missiles, but you, 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 you don't need to get super missiles from that when you go this way and the boss is kind of annoying, so this is a much better option. Now, because I wasted all those missiles, I actually kind of have to slowly fight my way through these enemies while I'm collecting missiles. Which is a bit unfortunate, but as I said, I'm really bad at, at that boss fight, so... Even managing to kill it before I run out of missiles is kind of a miracle. Uh, you could make this jump without freezing these enemies, but I don't like to risk it, since uh, if I risk it, I basically have to reset the entire game, because that's just kind of wasting an entirely too much time. So, taking it slow there is kind of a safety thing. So, with that we get the first super missiles. Now we need to do the same thing again. And um, 
yeah, we, we do the exact same thing again. This time the enemies did cooperate properly and let me get past it a bit quicker. So, we also get a second super missile here. You needed the super missiles to get here in the first place, so... Had to get those ones first. Now that that's out of the way, there's no, no reason to not really head directly to Ridley. Now Ridley is of course reasonably tough. Uh, normally, normally, if this was a proper speedrun, you wouldn't get the E tank that's hidden behind that block. That is unlocked by the unknown item I just found, but I think it's probably a pretty de decently good idea for me to go and get that as safety because, well, it only wastes like, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds. So, Ridley is not a fight with a lot of strategy to it. You spawn him in and then you fill him with missiles until he hopefully is dead. You hopefully get all the four super missiles in without him too many, without wasting too many of them on his fire powers, because that that is a thing that can happen, probably also will happen. But yeah, yeah, he kind of dies rather anticlimactically, and uh, that's that's gonna be doubly so for Kraid. And here is a perfect example of me being bad, and also me being unable to do wall kicks because of the controller. I should be able to get a wall kick off of exactly this spot. I'm not. So I spend entirely too long trying to get this enemy to cooperate, freeze at the proper spot, failing, and failing more. And that just kind of goes on a while. This is one of the worst, worst parts about this entire run. Like, I'm curious to know how much time I wasted here. Eventually, I just figured, fuck it. I, I, I have, I have bomb jumps. And yeah, bomb jumps worked perfectly well. I probably could have easily just frozen the enemy and uh, gone for the bomb jumps to begin with. I would have saved a considerable amount of time. Now, the enemies in Ridley, the area, do deal considerable amounts of damage, so I'm kind of playing it safe as well as hopefully trying to get some kind of drops out of them. Not really necessary because before you really need anything more, you do end up refilling again, or at least I do. So, now we're back at, at nearly the beginning. Yeah. I forget that that's a missile block because my memory is bad as always, but that's not a big deal. And with that, Ridley, the area, is done, and that's probably the hardest area of the game. Or at least the original game. Uh, Joe Sodia and the stealth sectioning might be a bit worse. So, now it's just kind of backtracking back to the uh, Prince Star and then towards Kraid. I do pick up the high boots here. Normally you would get the missiles that were here now, but I got them before because, well, I desperately need them for fighting the warm boss. And featuring entirely too many wall jumps and general bad gameplay. I think I even fall down back there from here. No? Okay. Still, still kind of playing unnecessarily safe here, so I don't accidentally fall into the lava and die, because that 
does drain your health pretty quickly. So it's mostly unnecessary, but I do actually kill myself up here as well, just to be safe. Safety, safety is kind of a keyword when I was trying to do this. So now it's just basically your normal backtracking to grade and there's not much anything important here. So instead, I think I'll give a quick, I, I, I don't know, thoughts on Samus Returns. Uh, I specifically did not play another Metroid 2 remake after we heard that this is coming out, just so I don't kind of compare it to the game, like unfairly, because another Metroid 2 remake may have been mostly made by one person, but it was made for 10 years, so I'm not sure if it's entirely fair to make a comparison like that. Like, I'll, I'll, I will definitely play another Metroid 2 remake sometime in the future, probably on my own, but I don't want to compare Samus Returns to the game. I want to kind of judge it on its own merits. If I hate it, then, well, I, I know who to blame, and if, if I don't, then good. And the reason this video even exists is because I want the game to succeed. The future of 2D Metroids basically relies on the game selling well. Whatever that might mean. So I, I hope people would get it. No, not necessarily immediately, because, yeah. Anyways, uh, here comes what might be the hardest trick of the run. I don't have too many problems with it, though. So, normally you're supposed to activate these lift things by killing the acid worm, but you can skip that by doing a very specific bomb jump like that. I, I would say I have about a 50% consistency on that, maybe, maybe a bit lower. So if I fail it, I basically do have to reset because I'm in the acid and I'm dying and it takes a while to get out of there. But it's, it saves like, I, I don't even know, 5 minutes? It, it, it saves entirely too much to not do. So after that, it's basically just your normal normal go, go through Great Slayer quickly. I kind of fail at killing these. You can shoot two missiles while you're running at full speed and they will die. But I unfortunately failed three out of the five. It's, it's kind of tight to get. And with that, we've reached Kraid. Now, the problem with Kraid is that uh, I have super missiles. Uh, Kraid was not made with super missiles in mind, so... One, two, three, and it's gone. I mean, I, I shot a fourth one in case I missed, but... Well, obviously I didn't, so... So that's fine. And... Now, we get the most, I, I would say, the most difficult item to use. And that is the speed booster. I I, I don't know what that was. Uh, the speed booster is a lot of fun, but the games usually like to make... Also, also I make up safety refill here. Uh, the game does really like to make you do some ridiculous shine sparking occasionally for some items with it. And, well, I don't usually in this run use it for items, but it does get a few pieces of use. 
the first one being here. But that's just basically normal stuff. Now, because we don't have the, the uh, lift elevator thing going, we have to do another shine spark to get quickly past this part. It's kind of tight to get up there before it comes out, but it's not a big deal. I don't know how you're supposed to avoid getting mauled by hundreds of flies there, but I don't know, I, I, I've always enjoyed that. Like, you, you just can't get quickly enough anyway. So, now that that's all of it, we're going directly to Mother Brain. There's only one very small detour, and it's not much of a detour considering it's right in the way. But it is another shine spark for a an, another two super missiles, basically. So there is a strategy to do this faster, where you would gain the shine spark from down there, and then you would do some ridiculous fast movements to do it. But because it's really hard, I decided that I'll do it the normal way. It's it wastes a bit of time, but it's not too bad. So we get the shine spark. This is something that a lot of people can't actually make work properly. You go here, you press down so that you stop somewhere there, and then you just do that. Like I I don't know if it's still relevant, but. Years and years ago, a lot of people have had problems doing that properly, or at all. I like how there was just a random wall jump there. I've been saying how wall jumps are awful the entire time, and then I just randomly do one that has no real, real purpose. I don't know, sometimes I just feel like a wall jump will work, and then I go for it, and well, it works. So, the main reason to go this route instead of continuing the climb on the room is you can get speed boost here. I unfortunately screwed it up. It doesn't save much time, but hey, every second counts, I guess. And yeah, then it's time for Turian and now we get to the Metroid part of, of the, the title, because there are Metroids now, and Metroids, when you have a, or only a bit of health, are actually pretty scary to deal with. If they manage to latch onto you, you lose health really fast, and it's easy to get accidentally comboed into getting grabbed over and over again until you're just dead. They're not the hardest to deal with as long as you don't screw up. It's just that screwing, screwing up is really bad. So they die with either five missiles or one super missile. Since I have six super missiles, I'm going to mostly use them and hope to get some quality drops out of them. I usually don't, because my luck is not exactly the greatest. This area is kind of tricky since there's a lot of ringas or Cheerios or Apple Jacks, whatever you, whatever the kids call, call them these days, to actually get the first one, and that's why it managed to catch me. I was trying to play it safe, and playing it safe was dangerous. Go figure. But other, otherwise, that went relatively well. I mean, Okay, so um, I don't know how the commentary is going to go, go from here because uh, I got a phone call and that kind of kind of ruined my stash here. That's uh, slightly unfortunate, but uh, I don't know. I probably had some kind of a clever thought here. I I, I completely forgot. So I guess we can just in enjoy this this. Uh, Genocide of Metroids. That is why we're all here, right? Uh, 
So here's the most dangerous room of Metroids. If you don't know what's coming, you can end up getting overwhelmed by like six Metroids and at once. And if you do run out of missiles, well, tough luck. You're gonna probably have to dodge Metroids while trying to get them from the Rinkas. And uh, that's just a fun time for everyone. So, after that, there's just a refill room, which for now I'm going to ignore, because... Because, uh, I want to take a few of these zebetite walls out of the way before I refill, so I have enough for Mother Brain here, coming, coming rather soon. Now, the thing with Mother Brain is that I'm really bad at Mother Brain as well. Go Go, go figure, I, I'm bad at many things in this game. Like, if I can just get to the mostly safe spot, I'll probably be fine. But I usually don't get there and I end up dying within seconds. And that's really, really annoying because this is a fair bit into the run after all. And I'm honestly shocked I even survived on this particular attempt. As we'll see, it did not start out smoothly, but somehow I prevailed. So, just refilled myself to full there. And then I do more Sigurdite walls while I probably get completely destroyed by all the turrets and ringas and as you can see I'm already in the lava losing a lot of health so I, I don't know what I was actually thinking there because you have to kind of break the jar first I, I, I have no idea so you use the super missiles on that and then you do your best to get to the safe spot right in front of mother brain it's really hard to get out of the lava and actually get into the safe spot if you ever fall down there and then you can just repeat this you shoot either a super missile or five missiles and then you make sure you freeze the ringas and then you repeat it until mother brain is dead now you could i, I could have done this a bit faster if I shot four normal missiles and then used a super missile, but I, I, I wasn't concerned enough. Uh, when you fight Mother Brain like that, you can actually get a speed boost off of the jar before Mother Brain dies, and you can skip a small portion of this. I didn't get enough speed, so I unfortunately failed that but otherwise that went rather well and the rest of the es escape sequence is pretty self-explanatory and of course if this was normal metroid this is where the game would be over well it would have ended the moment you hit the the uh, elevator but that's not really the point so, of course, we are far from the end of the game here, because the most difficult part, at least for going fast without any kind of equipment, is kind of tough. I do have to wonder if we're going to get something like the Zero Mission portion here with Samus Returns, like, after the game is over, there's more to it. I don't know what that would be, and I would hope that it's not, if there is something like that, that it, it wouldn't be just Zero Suit Samus again, but something new and fresh, maybe. Or maybe we'll have some kind of extra content during the game itself. I mean, based on what we've seen so far, it seems like a lot has changed. And only the basic exoskeleton 
I guess, would be remaining. But enough about that. Let's let's go through what this is. So it's notoriously difficult to do the entire stealth section without getting spotted at all. And side note, here's the most meaningful cutscene. That's that's so necessary. But funnily enough, for the sake of not getting spotted, the first two parts are actually the hardest. Also skipping the map station there. I don't always get it. So when you get to the mothership and or Chosodia, for some reason they decided that the game should actually refill your health. So I take use of that as a safety precaution. So I don't even know how you're supposed to avoid the first one. I don't think I've managed it at all. And the second one coming up shortly, I activate on purpose because I can't do the skip anyways. Like you're supposed to crawl to the end of that and then you break it and you do an extremely precise wall jump. And if you manage to do that it saves a bit of time because there's no alarm at all. But I don't think it's worth me trying to do that. So this climb, if you do it fast enough or something, the alarm actually goes off. Like it did here. I've only managed to do that a few times and I don't think it's entirely reliant on speed. Because I'm pretty sure I've done it faster than that. At least based on the position of the space pirates. And that just does nothing. And here's the worst wall jump in the game. You need to sh shoot up that corner and then you need to do a few wall jumps. Either three if you go from the ground or two if you go from here. And this shows exactly why wall jumps suck for me. I keep accidentally pressing up while I'm trying to switch to from left to right and vice versa. So that took me entirely too long and I, it probably would have been faster to not do it that way. But I don't really do slower strats if there's no reason to skip the faster ones like in terms of safety. And that's not risky, that's just potentially wasting time. But potentially saving it as well. So after that... There's another one. Not not immediately afterwards, there's a bit of a trip here. So here you do need to do two wall jumps again. And this is basically necessary if you don't want to get noticed. Actually, I'm not sure if that's true, I've never gone down there. But if you do get noticed, you need to wait the cards out in that hole if you want to have any hope of getting this shortcut. I got it perfectly, but oftentimes I fail to wall jump and the pirate notices me and it makes it a lot harder to get in there. So I'm glad that went well, because that possibly could kill me if it goes badly enough. Uh, coming up in a few more rooms is a big room. I think it's... After this, after this, you can wall jump up there, but you need to be really precise to not get noticed, and you basically have to do it flawlessly for that. So, I think it's like four wall jumps, so I did not even consider it as a viable option for me, so I took the shorter route, well, longer route, not shorter. It's not particularly hard, but if you do it fast enough, you don't even need to stop to worry about the searchlights. Similarly here, if you do this fast enough, you don't even need to stop to think about what you do. There's a lot of sections here that you just don't need to think about what you're doing if you go fast enough. That's basically like a 50-50 chance of the pirate noticing you, but it actually doesn't matter at all. You save a few seconds if he doesn't notice you, but that's not a huge 
issue. That's honestly me bonking my head like that was a bigger issue here. Because the alarm is going to automatically end here, you just need to wait a while up here. And I, I always wondered about this. They show that, yeah, they, here's power bombs and here's a pirate taking it away, but why would Samus care? Samus doesn't have her power suit right now, so it's not like she could even use it. I never really understood why that was. Like, Samus shouldn't have any reason to care. But, I, I, I guess the plot demands that she cares. Uh, here I made a small mistake, but that wall jump that I bet my life on, basically, worked out, so I, I, I can accept that. I always liked this part, There's that one space part that just has to get up constantly and as such wastes valuable time. It's, I, it's kind of funny to me. So again, there was probably a faster route here if you do excessive amounts of wall, wall jumps, but how about I don't? That always looks like one of them would actually make it, but they, they really don't. So, with that, we're basically getting to the point where we need to deal with the next boss. And uh, this boss is more annoying than difficult. Now, I do want to point out... I mean, I'm sure many people have already pointed this out, and this is not new in any way. But... The, at the end of the game, they show that there's drawings by Samus in, in, in the wall thing. Like, or, or near the ground. And I think it's really neat that you can actually see them during the fight. It's like four pixels and another four and like two like it's completely like minimal and you can't even probably tell what they are but it's, it's really neat so for this fight you really want to keep moving or otherwise lightning will strike from the ceiling and everything is miserable and the other thing is that you want to stay close to the ghost uh, the ghost itself doesn't do that much damage, so for the most part you can just kind of face plant yourself and hope for the best. You do need to have kind of quick reactions to hit the target when it's available though. But with that we get our power suit back and this is if something is rewarding the player. You spend the game getting stronger, then you have it all stripped away from you. And then it comes back and you're now not only stronger than before, but you also get to completely destroy everything. Kinda. A random note is that when you get the gravity suit, you also get the various suits. For some reason they coded it like that. So if you actually now were to go back to get varia suit, you can't, it's, it's not there anymore. So, that and the power grip are the... Varia suit and the power grip are the only two items the game arbitrarily forces you to get. Everything else is required at some point or other without, like, something. So, now we just get to have the normal, not really an escape sequence, because that comes later, but we backtrack as quickly as possible out of this place. And occasionally you have to actually kill the pirates, and I usually forget what I'm supposed to do, because this is not a super hard part, so I didn't actually practice this that much. So I probably make some 
critical mistakes here and there. Like, the parts I practiced most were basically Ridley, that one trick at Great's area, uh, Mother Brain itself, and the first half of Shosodia and Ma 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 Mothership, which was the stealth section. Here's another mildly useless Shine Spark, which, by the way, I completely plunder and fall down because I was taking damage. Good job there. Yeah. Yeah. So, that aside, we're getting kind of close to the end, and very near the end is actually a really neat trick that I practiced a lot so that I can, could be consistent with it. It's not super hard, but when it's literally the last two minutes of the game, also here I make a mistake. I want to fill my energy, so I killed the enemy and I went back to the previous room and that activated the alarm again. So I had to do it the, uh, on the other door. That, that was really dumb. I didn't know it, that could happen because... Because uh, I never before did a safe safety thing here. My bad. But yeah, it's not super hard as a trick. But... But it, it really is at the very end. And there I completely forgot for a moment what I was supposed to do. As I said, I did not practice this area nearly enough, honestly. Like, I, I know the basic gist through it, but I'm more more used to being doing the, the stealth sections here. So, at times I was thinking about what I'm supposed to do for that. If I, if I had a few weeks more time, I would have probably taken that time to actually fix all these really stupid problems I had. Not including wall jumping because I've concluded that's not something I can do like at all. So now we're basically on, on the route that we will be taking for the escape sequence and you can actually pay attention here to how it takes me a while to get through all this especially when I screw up but super especially this guy you can speed him up and he just slowly battles forward so this is something to keep in mind because I'm going to skip a bunch of this And as far as I know, the skip doesn't help you in any other way other than saving time, so... Again, really neat. And I hope that... Like, like th this is actually something I would really like to see with Samus Returns. Is that they actually make it so that if you want to go fast, there's basically completely optional possibilities for that. Like this game does. This game is a lot of fun to speedrun for many people, specifically because it has basically planned routes that are meant for you to go fast, and it's really neat that way. So in that room, if you get noticed, there's suddenly a pile of enemies there. That's really annoying. So <laughs> there, I wanted to quickly kill the enemies to get hopefully some health and hopefully also not die to them. And the end result was just that I threw like 20 missiles on them and they all missed. It was pretty great. At this point I'm... You, you can kind of definitely see that I'm taking some safety plays like killing enemies. I wouldn't necessarily have to kill. Just because we're getting close enough to the end. Normally I would just trip, trip the alarm and kill the enemies that come out, but... 
again, I didn't want to risk it, so I tried to do it safely, and surprisingly, I actually succeeded. So now that we have the power bombs, there's really nothing else left than to go and kill the kind of final boss. I'm not sure if Iron Ted, as some call him, qualifies as a boss, as, as we'll see here. See, Grade... Grade dies to super missiles extremely easily because you're not supposed to have super missiles. So he kind of has an excuse for that. Uh, Iron Ted, not so much as we'll see. So, here we go. The supposed final boss. I would like to take its time to get actually to the battle arena, so I had some fun there. Jumping so that he hopefully lifts his neck up quickly. And I got basically really lucky that he kept his neck up so he could die. And that just leaves the final escape sequence. Five minutes. So, there's not much to be said here, just your usual, usual stuff here. Go carefully. Uh, I used my last super bomb, pa power bomb there because there's not really any other spot to use it. There is one spot, but I'm going to skip that place, so that's not needed. So this room is... If you try to go as fast as you can, it gets really risky. You kind of need to know where, where and how the space balance move. So, taking a beating from the... Bombas. Bomb juice? No, bomb juice are something else. So, okay. Here's this thing again. Now that he's facing me, I can just blast him with missiles and that happens. I can then get a speed boost here, kill this, shine spark, store the shine spark, jump up, kill the enemy, jump up, store it again, store it third time, open the door, store it, and then go to morph ball and just a speed boost to victory. This is really cool and that that saves like probably like a minute but there's one more enemy there that's going to follow you and you kind of want to kill him because you want to fight the black pirates in peace here obviously going with the cheese strategy here since uh, these things can destroy you really easily and then there's the final jump scare enemy didn't quite get 3.30 on the escape, but that's, that's fair. Hard mode I think has like 3 minutes, so... And the final space pilot is a brave one. And yeah, that's the game. My original intent was to actually play the game until I could get the game in less than 15 minutes. That didn't quite happen as that was more more like 54 minutes. Give or take. So I just skipped the credits there, but I left this part since it shows the drawings. I think the drawings are kind of neat. And after that, of course, there's the traditional thing. You know, the thing. For my percentages, you know, percentages. That's that's definitely a word. And 
According to the game, the final clear time is 39.24, which is certainly less than 40 minutes. My item collection rate was kind of bad. Hey. Yeah, see you next mission on September 15th.